You're listening to episode 24 of... 24. 24. Of Flesh of Floppies. Oh, my God. Don't cancel Noel. He's Mexican. He's allowed to make that accent. What do you say? <laughs> What's up to all our sidekicks and henchfolk out there in the Mother Love and Geek Nation? You're currently tuning in to... Fresh Floppies. Uh, Yum. The, the freshest floppies in town. Yeah. The floppiest freshest in town. Yeah, today we're we're uh, we're podcasting with a live studio audience. Of two. Of two. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey, guys. Said so, no, don't wave. <laughs> it's an audio. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anybody heard that, but I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, it. Yeah, there you. it is. Um, uh, what's a floppy and how's, tell us about the uh, freshness of it. Floppy is a, is a, a common um, parlance, uh, a nomenclature. colloquialism, nomenclature for a single issue comic book that comes out uh, on a weekly basis um, in sequential order by number. He <laughs> nailed it. Nailed it. So we're here to talk about spoiler free reviews of stuff that dropped today, Wednesday, at your local comic shop. Uh, we, we, uh, we're on a time schedule. So let's get into it. Amazing Spider-Man number 31, legacy numbering 925. This is a thick boy with I, three C's. I wondered why it was an anniversary issue and then it was like legacy 925. <laughs> I still don't understand why 925 is a legacy issue. It's impressive. I mean, an anniversary issue. Like, it's impressive. How's it more impressive than 924? It's not like it's I mean, 950. 25 is divisible by 100 in a very like prestigious way. 25th anniversary. I guess it's prestigious. Yeah. 925 <laughs> seems... Seems cool. You know what? I would I would be mad uh-huh. about this uh, fake anniversary if I didn't enjoy the shit out of this comic book. Well, let me ask you this: Did you enjoy the shit out of this comic book? I shit myself. Oh my god! Because I enjoyed it so much. So I we I, really turned Noel around. I skadooshed on, on, yeah. <laughs> on, on Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, no, oh, this I'm book so is excited. phenomenal. And oh, you know what? Zeb Wells. Yeah. Uh, um, um, the majority of it, the main story is written by Zeb. Presentation. Presentation. Is a perfect bound. Uh, magazine style comic uh-huh. book. Um, it's not a har- uh, cardboard cover. It's just kind of thicker. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I'm good it's with fine. it. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it yeah. turned well. Like, it, the page turned well. It didn't feel cheap and it didn't feel like You it know, for a 925th part. anniversary issue, I expected more for the cover. You know what? Wait for 950. Okay, that'll be yeah. the one. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Zeb Wells, John Romita Jr. Uh, uh, Dan Slott wrote a, a story in here. So did two other. You wrote a couple of stories in here. Yeah, Dan Slott, two, two stories. And then um, uh, we'll. I don't remember the other creator. I'm sorry. There's like seven creators in this book. Oh, Carrie Andrews has a little uh, oh, yeah, coda in the back. Carrie Andrews, that's right. Ooh, um, yeah, this is a wonderful issue. So the the main f- first issue is just a, um, uh, essentially it's an it's a it's a classic in between issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a character focused issue that kind of um, ramps down the last arc, but ramps up the next arc. Mm-hmm. You're just like going to a wedding. Um, it's Betwixt. wonderful. Oh, betwixt uh, Randy. Re- Robertson. Randy Robertson and I forget her name. Beetle. The Blue Beetle. Or not the Blue Beetle. <laughs> <laughs> Jaime Reyes. Um, uh, the, just the Beetle. Yeah, yeah the, the Beetle. The villainous Beetle. Uh, essentially tomb- Tombstone's daughter. Yeah. So um, the the beginning of the book is a bachelor party and a bachelorette party. And then the second half of the book is the wedding the, the next day. Mm-hmm. Something that I was so upset about happened in this book. Yeah. I'm... Is it something that we were previously excited about and now we're upset about? Uh, well, I was I was very excited about it. I'm still ex- incredibly excited about it, um, but it's no longer exciting because they, they, they... Yeah, they end... They, it was a, st- a plot point, a storyline... I was enjoying. ...that I was enjoying and now has come to an end. Maybe it's not completely over, but it probably I, is. It's it fine. It sounds like it is. Um, it wasn't great, but... Everything else in this book was so charming, and yeah. I mean, John Romita Jr. is doing really great work here. It is. He needs to figure out how to design new characters. Nope. This looks like every <laughs> character he's ever designed. Yep. Ever. Yeah. I, you sound like you're saying that's a flaw. Uh, I'm it saying it's amazing. Okay. Oh uh, no, I'm messing with you. Yes, uh, this this is filled with uh, John Romita Jr. risms. Yeah. Yeah. But Which is fine. I just don't like the, the there's, a, there's a new villain who shows up. To cause havoc, and I just his name the, is Shotgun. The outfit is awful. Um, I love this. I love this book. I love this issue. The rest issue. of it was great. Um, the second story. Uh, so, um, hey guys, Miss Marvel's back. Yay! Sorry, she's a mutant anime human. She's been revived now. Um, part of the reviving process is that they don't necessarily they only remember up until their last backup by Xavier. So she yeah. doesn't know how she died. So this is a rooftop conversation with Peter about. 
um, how she went out like a hero. Yeah. And I loved this, this short wonderful. story. Yeah. I loved it. And loved I it, love the it. other the, the man with all the answers uh, that takes place in the bar with no name by Dan Slott and Mark Bagley, which is all um, Doc Ock. Uh, and then I, we got uh, Mary Jane and Paul dealing with the repercussions of what they went through, which yeah. actually was th- really good. Uh, Spider Woman preview. Yeah. This there's yeah the, the rest of this book is all previews for stuff that's coming. But there's no they were all enjoyable. Yeah. They were all super enjoyable to read. It didn't feel like even the Spider Boy stuff was yeah. cool. I was like yeah I, this the the one with the um mother the mother of invention mother monstrosity. Yeah, I was like what is this? Where is this? Oh okay. So yeah, this was this was uh, fresh AF. Yeah, I was awesome. so incredibly happy with it. And Except also, for the also, one thing that I was sad about. You know what though? I'm sad about it because it was narratively um, worked. I don't think because, so. No, uh, I am. You get upset with stories. Sometimes you get upset with stories because they effectively upset you yeah. intentionally. Yeah. So we were invested. Mm-hmm. Now they screw with it like a yeah. soap opera does, yeah. and I'm butthurt. And you know what? And that's part of the process. Not. I'm gonna jump on Twitter and freak out. Anytime, oh well, yeah. yeah. Anytime, anytime there's like a wedding, this gener- this sort of thing usually happens. It's true. This this tracks. Uh, next up, Ghost Rider, Wolverine, Weapons of Vengeance, Alpha from Marvel Comics, written by I want to say Ben Percy with art by um, the incredible Jeff, Jeff Shaw. Shaw. Dude, Jeff Shaw is killing it. I love uh, Jeff we know Shaw. him from Donny Cates's. Uh, uh, well, crossover was the last thing, but then they together they were doing um, Thanos. No, before that. No, oh, with what? the big sword. Oh yeah, that's right, God Country. God Duh. Country, and he is really he was good in that. But this man, this is yeah. tight as hell. He, he, I really was gonna, say, you know what? That's one. the perfect word for it. Like he he always had the same kind of acting style with all his characters, but it yeah. was a little looser. This is tight. incredibly tight. Like that, the page you just passed of old school Wolverine just like growling in front of a door. Yeah. That is frame worthy. Yeah. It's That's so beautiful. I, I mean, even the page before that with him and, yeah. uh, and, this, uh, and I kept, I, so this right. is, this is one of those alpha issues. It's the beginning of an arc or the beginning of an event, a yeah. little event, it's four issues, but it's going to go alternating, alternating between each character's books. So like the next one's like Ghost Rider 17 and then Wolverine 30 something. This is, and how then, I like in a, this is how I like a crossover. Because it gets you to buy the other book yeah, or get into the other book. try it. And I, I, I looked everywhere I could and it seems as though Jeff Shaw's right, drawing the whole thing. Oh, dope. Which, if so, I'm hella in. Yeah. But if it was like a weird jumping back and forth conjoined thing and then mm. just like a, you know, like the, uh, like the, the X-Men events of all where it's like 75 artists and 75 writers yeah, yeah. and you just don't have to read any of it yeah. not a fan but this is awesome nice and toit yeah this it. was this off to a good start i like uh the interactions between wolverine and johnny blaze i like the the problem that they've set up here with this child and um, his ability i'd say is, it's a thing is disgusting hey did and did does this so the the big bad that they kind of reveal which they don't actually reveal they just kind of show this thing yeah is it related to a New Mutants thing? I it is very New Mutants. It, it's very much uh, that I never read. It's exactly I never read that either. But I know enough about the New Mutants to be like, oh yeah, that thing, that thing. So it looks like it is related to the New Mutants. Okay. Um, or it's a very interesting a new thing that looks like a thing. Yeah. Hey. This is what you get when you don't have spoilers. Yeah. Just a shit ton of vagities. <laughs> no, vagities. That, va- vagities. Vaga- vagities. Okay. No. Is Vagueness. that a word, Brian? Vagities. vagities? Sounds good to me. Yeah, it does. That's right, Vagueness. baby. Um, uh, but, what, uh, fresh? How fresh? Uh, this was fresh as fresh AF for me. Yeah, uh, was, especially because I I opted for the uh, Frank Miller cover. Good. <laughs> it. it's, it's it's something. I'll tell you what. All right, I I want to talk quickly about Superman twenty twenty three annual, uh, written by Joshua Williamson with art by a bunch of people. Mumad is Thrar. Yeah. Um, and other people. Man, uh, the next page. All those. Yeah. Mahmoud give me those Asrar, artists. Edwin Galman, Caitlin Yarsky, Max Rayner, and Jack Herbert. All of these artists are doing their best approximation of uh, Campbell. Um, yes. Yeah, well, um, uh, what? Jamal. Jamal. Jamal Campbell. They're all doing yeah, their best really approximation is. of Jamal Campbell. Wow. And honestly, it works. Uh, there's a, another artist. I... I don't know uh, halfway through the middle of the book that it's like a cross between Jamal Campbell and Gary Frank, which is oh. wild. Um, but this is a, this issue is incredibly awesome. I have oh, not been reading nice. the Superman book. Um, I read the first story arc and I loved it. 
I think I'm gonna start because, or at least get the like pick them up or something yeah, or get like the Eddie trades. Barrows. This is absolutely wonderful, um, and it sets. This is an annual, guys. This isn't like a side story. This literally sets up the next year of Superman books. Oh, that's what an annual should be. Supposed to do, right? Annuals are just, well, like, the same. Issue, yeah. The same creative oh. team, or like the same writer, at least, kind of, uh, maybe touching on a thing and then setting up some stuff that might get down. And the, the way it kind of works out is just like Superman's doing a thing, uh, saving the world, doing a thing. And you are, you're, you're privy to a, a meeting, uh, an editorial meeting at the Daily Planet that Lois is running. Yeah. And all of this, you, you get introduced to the, every single staff member of note. Uh, mm -hmm. And they all pitch ideas that are very comfortable for them. And she's like, no, screw it. You're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. So yeah. like, you know, he, she sends Lombard to go interview a like convict. A she sends, cannon. yeah, basically. <laughs> um, but it, the, the way that she shuffles the decks, they yeah. all are small subplots that just kind of come back together at the end. And it's, it's, it's a really strong one shot. I have not read this. I am very excited to read it. And th th just, you know what? I'm gonna review it immediately from the cover by Chris Somney. This is fresh AF. <laughs> I haven't even read it. But no, this Chris Somney cover is dope. It is, it is, this but, is an excellent um, jumping on point. This is a great you book. You should do that then. You this is a on. great book. Very, very happy with it. Uh, that Texas Blood, The Enfield Gang Massacre, number one by Chris Condon and Jacob Phillips on art. I have not read... I got one subscriber for that Texas Blood. That Texas Blood. And then uh, I think that that's over. And then the Enfield Gang Massacre is a miniseries that goes along with that Texas Blood. Is the Texas Blood over? Or it's uh, it's maybe, become is, this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't uh, so I know it's, for that it's three trades. I read a couple issues. Um, it's basically a, a, noir, a crime noir book, but mm -hmm. it's a Texas flavor. Now, oh, have you read it? Have you read a single issue? Three issues. Is it contemporary or is it like this, which is a tossback? The first arc is contemporary, mm. from what I understand, and by that I mean other people talking about it. I get the impression that each arc is maybe a different era in the so lives like of, criminal. or the, I would think more like Fargo, oh, yeah, all right. where it's like something in a small area, mm. and then maybe 20 years before, maybe oh, okay. 30 years later, and then that makes me think that this, the Engfield Gang Massacre, which is takes place in the Old West, Still a connected book to that Texas Blood. Maybe it's the same town. This Maybe. is this is us postulating because we don't read the main book. But yeah. this is accessible this as is it is. This is banging, right? I I uh, I have no idea what that Texas Blood is about. I don't know if I would know more about this if I read it. But uh, this first issue, the Enfield Gang Massacre, it, I might just read this miniseries. Let's talk presentation. Well, for, oh yeah, let's the the. The cover stock is a lovely satin. It's, it's like, not a super card stock, but it's a lovely there is a, smooth There's a matte satin. feel to it, almost mm. like, um, uh, I want to say, Pulp Magazine. It makes me want to get like NPR on it. Like, ooh, on the inside soft. of the cover like are fake nice. advertisings, mm, advertisements like fake for old-timey old, old, yeah. old mm -hmm. uh, newspaper. Uh, you could the, buy a gun for three ninety nine. or the, the paper stock is a, is a nice- um, It's newspaper news paper stock. Print. Yeah. It's a and nice then, newsprint that's been aged. The book itself, like a fine wine? The, 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 the book itself actually does work across two time periods. Mm -hmm. And the the way that they approach the coloring mm -hmm. is different and it's beautiful. Like I literally turned to the fourth page and was like, oh, it was almost like a breath of fresh air. Yeah, yeah like between mm. the corpse and yeah. like, and this is Jacob Phillips, who is Sean Phillips' brother. I He does color. That tracks. He does color. Ed Brubaker and his brother's oh. books. Oh, is but he this is his too? His, yeah, he's this oh. is his full, this is his art as far as I know. He did colored, inked, and and, and uh, sketched. This book is awesome. This whole so yeah, basically it's a wild, wild west story about some bank robbers. It's like one wild. It's <laughs> it is a singularly wild yeah. west story, and um, the, the second wild is when you have robotic spiders. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's just <laughs> wild west. Yes, by John uh, Peters. Wild, wild west. Um, it's different. And this is just a really solid character work, storytelling. Yeah. Uh, everything is easily manageable uh, as far as the art the, is concerned. I'm surprised I haven't seen more from this Jacob Phillips as a basic, penciler. Basically, all he's been doing is that Texas Blood. He's Damn. been the penciler for the whole series. Um, and it's it's you know it's it's got all of your normal Wild West trappings, mm -hmm. but uh, I think I. 
I feel more connected to these characters in one issue than I do many Wild West yeah. stories. I was actually wondering how you would this would if this would affect you because I as far as I know you don't give a shit about westerns. Not generally. No, yeah. but but still like this is this was great. solid as hell. Yeah, man. My I'm most impressed over like of all the things that I'm impressed with, I'm most impressed with the panel layout and the pacing mm -hmm. because there are full scenes that are sometimes almost silent but yeah. then smash cuts like how do you he pulls off a smash cut right here mm -hmm. of a, a, i don't know that was just so incredibly effective to me going from um three panels to a whole one page splash mm -hmm. uh and you i literally felt the door swing and yeah. everyone turn their heads yep. right the like, storytelling is clutch this is this this, well this is one of my favorite things i read this week I, this is I wonderful. was really impressed and the the color scheme keeps changing scene to scene which i love mm -hmm. um Oh, uh, it's gory when think, it needs to be. Do you think he did it? Oh wait, no, he definitely did. Absolutely not, right? Abs absolutely, yeah, he wants not. the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was, uh, so I, I don't know if it's spoiler. We've got a gang who keeps robbing the same bank over and over again. They're very it's, good at it. It's yeah. almost, <laughs> it's almost like comical. Like, all right, man, I'll see you next month. Finger guns, and but with real guns. The um, <laughs> the the banker um, winds up dead. So yeah. of course they assume it's the Ingfield gang. Um, and I don't I'm think it's them. Yeah, I don't think so. Either. Yeah, it's especially brutal. But brutal but is. any book with any book with a Phillips on it, I assume it's going to be a tragic ending. Yeah. Oh, so shit. yeah, That's think about point. that for yeah. a second. I don't want to. Um, th this was also fresh AF. Yeah. This, this it, is a this is a incredibly solid. Week, I haven't even read all my books, and it's been an incredibly solid week already. Boom um, Studios, Met Cadets. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, um, the first page has the artist's first name. I forget. <clears throat> Takeshi Miyazawa. There you go. Um, this is a follow-up series to the original Mech Cadet U, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I did not read. I However, read the first issue for the Cold Pop podcast. I was ten years ago. I know about it and have known about it because I think it was I fanboy. Oh yeah. Like Josh they loved this it? book and just tech talked about it constantly, and it was always in the back of my head as like, I you know I gotta look up Mech Cadet U because I like Greg Pak. I'll look up Mech Cadet U. Yeah. Just obviously fell behind. But apparently it's going to be a show on Netflix. Yeah. So they relaunched the series. This is a sequel series. Uh, I don't know what happened in the first <laughs> 12 mm. issues. However, they just kind of plop you in and give you the bare bones. You were fine just jumping in? Yeah. Awesome. The art is wonderful. The characters are com incredibly well-defined. And I... I really dug it. Like, I'm going to go grab... I'm going to look up the other stuff. I think it, they just recently collected it all together in, like, one trade, all 12 issues. Mm -hmm. This is great. Like, I really, really like the art. You know what this feels like? Anybody that is um, brave enough to read modern Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, brave yeah, enough. It's, it feels like, to me, like Voltron. Yeah. You've got the different robots for the different characters, and they all, I think... Build together to make a. So it's no, they don't build together as far as I know. <clears throat> but my oh, no? understanding is that these mechs are not of this world, mm -hmm. um, and they require bonding, like lifetime oh. bonding, in order to work. Oh. Um, but the oh. big one is actually man-made. Oh. And wasn't the impression I got from the? I didn't look any of this up, so if I'm wrong, please correct me. The impression that I got was that they did a man-made one based off the other designs so it didn't require bonding however it ended up bonding to this girl oh. who happens to be the daughter of the general who's a big piece of shit okay so you've got like teenagers in charge of piloting the world's uh defense force and yeah. you know they expect them to not do the right thing and just follow orders so yeah it's it's there's nothing uh there's nothing inherently New, it's mm -hmm. just packaged Done so well. incredibly well. Yeah, yeah. And it seems yeah. to be uh, not just action. There's a it seems to be a lot of mm -hmm. st that the kids in school. Yeah, it's it's a it's a they're cadets. That's yeah. a it's an actual like skewel. Nice, but yeah, I, I, this was really strong. This was a fun uh, a fun How blind fresh? pickup. Uh, fresh, very fresh. Yeah, very fresh. Nice. Yeah, like underneath fresh AF. I Wait, no, it's it's fresh AF, fresh, fresh AF, very fresh, fresh. Barely fresh, fresh, fresh enough. Barely fresh. Yeah. I'm doing this with my hands, so of course everyone can see me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's very fresh. Pretty fresh. Fresh. 
<laughs> Every right. time you ask, I'm going to give you a different one. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are you looking for? Is what you're saying? Uh, it, uh, uh, freshish. 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 Fre- uh, freshish. Freshy. Okay. Uh, is that we're done? We did. Well, it. We, this is only 20 minutes. You want to vamp for two? No, because we got to set up the new show. And we're set. We're set up. Right. Are right. We? Hey, you know what you guys should do? You should join us right now. Uh, we're going to go live at eight o'clock to talk about. In 12 minutes. Yeah, which is, we're not going to post this probably till tomorrow. So last yeah, probably night, tomorrow morning. you were hanging out with us, watching the Cold Pop <laughs> Podcast live stream on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, where we talked about probably, I'm assuming, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem film. I think there's a really good bet that we talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks so much for hanging out with us, and we'll talk at you later. Bye! Bye. You are, you're singing so bad, you're singing so bad. Thank you for listening to the Cult Pop Network, home to podcasts, live shows, and a whole lot of fun stuff for every flavor of fan. Follow us wherever you find your favorite podcasts, and be sure to join us live every Wednesday night at youtube.com backslash cultpopgo at 8 p.m. Eastern. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we drop new thunder rounds and episodes of Fresh Floppies, a spoiler-free show about single-issue comics released each week. Until then, we'll talk at you later.